Uh, today, I will be responding to Cassandra Santoyo's uh, claim that there is a lack of multicultural background that has a harmful effect on minority education. And her first subclaim is that the lack of communication between parents and teachers uh, negatively hinders the educational system. The second claim is a lack of diversity causes a deficit of multicultural awareness from teachers. And the third claim I will repeat is that the students feel disconnected from teachers lacking a shared cultural background. Um, and my counterclaim will be that the lack of multicultural backgrounds of teachers isn't the issue. Uh, it's the teacher's lack of awareness of social factors and the student's sense of school belonging that improves academic learning. So I'm going to begin by defining social factors, achievement motivation, and goal orientation. Social factors, the relationship the students have with their family, friends, and other peers or teachers that can positively or negatively influence the student's motivation towards school. Achievement motivation refers to the student's desire to achieve competence relative to the standard of excellence, and goal orientation is often used to represent the idea that achievement goals are not just simple targets, uh, but they're more general goals. So first, um, the lack of communication between parents and teachers negatively hinders the educational system. Uh, I'm just going to admit that uh, that is important uh, between the communication between parents and teachers. Um, and if the teacher lacks the second language, um, it can negatively affect and affect the student in the long term. But most schools are prepared with translators uh, for parents who cannot speak English. Um, and that's all I will say about that. Uh, the second point is that there's a lack of diversity that causes a deficit of multicultural awareness from teachers. Not all of them have been exposed uh, to other cultures, but most have been exposed to family, higher educational experiences, and personal friends. And living in a first world country like America, there's like a melting pot, and people are exposed to other cultural backgrounds. And this multicultural awareness has little to do with the teacher's ethnic background, uh, but more with the teacher's tolerance with cultural differences. Uh, Stevens and all claim that the middle school students in the study apparently still perceive their teachers as important enough to influence their school belonging. Um, next, uh, the students, uh, the claim uh, was the students feel disconnected from teachers lacking a shared cultural background. And according again to Stevens, and at all, the majority of students reported average levels of school belonging and mastery goal orientation. So it is untrue that students with a different cultural background than the teachers will feel isolated or disconnected. Uh, teachers can still offer a sense of school belonging uh, and awareness of social factors uh, without the shared cultural background. Uh, being part of a school in itself is a type of culture, and the student's level of belonging is the most important culture. Uh, teachers or students' personal cultures can be integrated into the learning uh, atmosphere, but they shouldn't be, um, they shouldn't dominate it or cause some kind of discrimination or division. Um, the academic culture can guide students in learning with a focus on school belonging rather than dogmatic cultural norms that can damage this important sense of belonging. And the last point that I'm going to add is that friends have the strongest influence on students' sense of belonging. And a friend can guide or misguide their peers. Uh, just a quick example could be like if you have a friend, they can either guide you to drugs or in staying in school and being a good role model. Um, but Kara and et al. in their article, Friendships, Education, Engagement, and School Belonging, um, quote that peers and especially close friends play a major role in defining which behaviors, values, and attitudes are embraced and which ones are rejected. Therefore, if a student has a close friend who can help them feel uh, a sense of belonging in school, the student will have uh, positive benefits uh, by having the kind of relationship, especially the at-risk youth. So just to restate my claim, um, 
is that the lack of multi multicultural backgrounds of teachers isn't the issue. It's the teacher's lack of awareness of social factors and the lack of this, noticing the sense of school belonging in school in order for students to improve academic learning. Thank you. All right, well, you labeled the advocates' uh, claims pretty clearly. I thought that that was fine. And then you kind of get involved in explaining what your um, counter argument's going to be. And there's a lot of stuff where you start defining terminologies. And then I'm trying to figure out, well, once you've defined those terminologies, where are those arguments coming up later in the speech? And I didn't really hear a lot of reference to them. Uh, that seems strange that you're spending time on that issue and then not following through and using those particular points. Uh, there's criticism of the advocates' um, argument, you know, suggesting that there's an alternate causality that we're dealing with. I, I like that idea, uh, but I think that there ought to be some explanation about why your explanation is more valid than their explanation is. Uh, you just offer a, a counter explanation, but there's not really much reason to believe why one is better than the other. Until you get toward the end of your speech, where that's the one place that I got a citation of evidence that says that, you know, peer identification and friends have the greatest influence, this sense of belongingness that uh, we're talking about here, that that is the key factor. That's the first time I'm hearing information that is specific to the, pre the premise that you have as your counterclaim. That seems a little bit late. And none of it is contrasted to the evidence that the advocate cited. So did they cite any evidence that talked about why diversity of the instructors is more important than these other factors? And, and your answer should be no. They don't have any citation on that. There, there's no statistical information that suggests it makes a difference. There's barely a uh, theoretical explanation, and there aren't any experts that support that theory, even though it's been presented. So what proof do I have for my particular claim? Well, here's a research project that suggested that the strongest influence is this factor, and that uh, we're not doing as much about these factors as we ought to be. Then I think your argument's a little bit clearer. I thought at the end of the speech, your, your argument was clearer than what was going on at the beginning and the middle of the speech. And that makes, and part of the reason is that the evidence is presented right there at the end. And I think you want to do that more consistently throughout the presentation. All right.